Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the Siglent SDG 1025 uh, function generator, arbitrary function generator. Um, there was actually a, uh, a video by Aaron Parks back in September of 2014 about using it with a external reference. And um, recently I bought a GPS disciplined oscillator. Uh, it's one of the models made by BG7TBL and uh, it's available uh, out on Amazon is where, where I got it. I've got that feeding into a, uh, a down east microwave uh, box that actually breaks it out into four, um, four separate outputs, each with uh, uh, it's isolated, um, it's filtered, and uh, roughly unity gain. Um, so I wanted to follow up a little bit uh, on, on Aaron's video because uh, it gave me a lot of good insight into, uh, into what it takes to, uh, to drive this with an external reference and some things have changed and, and I wanted to let you know what is working for me um, and, and give you a little, maybe an idea of how to, uh, to do this if you want to do it yourself. Uh, so I've got right now uh, nothing, the, the 10 megahertz uh, reference is feeding into the back, but I'm not, uh, I'm not using it. Uh, I've got it turned off right now. If I go to, I'm going to do this a little bit different. If I go to utility and down to counter, uh, that basically gives me a, uh, uh, a frequency counter here, and I've got nothing in. Um, this T has uh, the 10 megahertz running to it. And when I get that connected, let it settle in. And you can see it's reading 9.999973 or 9.72. Um, so basically what that's telling you is that uh, the internal clock is, uh, of the Siglent is off by about three parts per million. Uh, it's counting a little less than it should, so that means the clock is running a little faster the, than it should. So off by, it's about three parts per million high. Um, and the signal that I'm driving it with uh, is over on the oscilloscope, and um, that's uh, 50 millivolts per division. And you can actually hit the measure display all. Uh, you can see it's about uh, 2.74 peak to peak. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what <laughs> what units it makes the most sense to uh, to try and measure that in. One volt RMS, uh, but the 2.7 peak to peak is uh, is basically what I'm feeding. Uh, out and into everything, uh, including the uh, the reference oscillator on this. Now, this is a little quirky because it's uh, it is the signal source, so these are actually both outputs. I'm a little wary about uh, sticking a, a signal, putting a signal in uh, on on uh, something that's supposed to be sending a signal out. Um, so over here, if I go to setup. Uh, no, it's not there. It's back here. Yeah, system. And here's the source. Clock source is uh, is internal. Now if I switch that to external and say done. Um, and I go back to the counter and I reconnect this now trading 10.000000 um, so basically the the input clock and the reference clock are exactly matched up so that's what you'd expect it to show uh, show basically the, the the same frequency 10 megahertz um, so you know, with the the uh, 2.75 volt peak to peak signal, um, it seems to be working fine uh, for me. I am driving this, uh, like I said, I've, I'm driving it out of a down east, east microwave uh, amplifier, um, so, and it gives me four outputs. I'm using one here. I've got one that I just kind of leave on a coax that's normally fed into a 50 ohm terminator uh, to use for different things on the bench. I've got one coming into the Siglent, and I'm building a divide by 10 uh, to feed a uh, Tektronix um, frequency counter that takes uh, a one megahertz reference source in. And actually that, that last point made me think of something kind of interesting. Um, I could in theory take this output and um, program it to, now that this is, this is synchronized with my GPS reference oscillator, if I put one megahertz out on this and fed it into the uh, Tektronix frequency counter, uh, 
it, it basically will be disciplined back to the, the GPS also. Um, but one kind of interesting thing that I got to thinking of, because I wanted to be able, the one thing I didn't like about this is that it can only measure out to the nearest hertz. It can't go uh, below a hertz, um, at least when you're measuring 10 megahertz. Or, uh, um, yeah, 10 megahertz. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how, how it picks a gate time or anything like that. On the Tektronix, I can pick a gate time of 10 seconds, which, which would uh, let me read uh, out to the tenth of a hertz. But the Tektronix, if it's using the external reference, if I, instead of putting this at 1 megahertz, were to put it at, say, 0.1 megahertz or 100 kilohertz, the Tektronix really it wouldn't. It would not know that the the frequency was off um, by a factor of ten, and in fact, it would count, and everything would be kind of slowed down by ten. Uh, but at that, I could read really to the hundredth uh, of a, a hertz. Um, it would take a hundred seconds to do it, um, but it's possible. So that's something I kind of want to tinker around with uh, at, at some point. But um, the other thing that happened uh, that Aaron showed in his video was that. Uh, when he powered it off and then powered it back on, uh, it had lost its connection uh, to the external sink, even though it showed that it was still using uh, external sink. So it takes a second here to, um, to power back up, but um, that does not seem to be a problem uh, anymore. So if I click the language of uh, English, if I go over to the utility menu, on system, uh, you can see the clock source is still set to external. So it's showing that it's set on external. Now what happened to Aaron was that it would show that it was set on external, uh, but it really was using the internal source after he power cycled it. So if we go down here and go back into the counter mode again and connect this up again, we'll see that we're we're spot on with the, uh, the 10 megahertz. So uh, it has ridden through basically a, a power cycle so uh, whatever whatever was causing that bug they uh, they seem to have fixed but anyway I'm, I'm happy I'm really happy with this uh, this setup it's gonna let me do some things uh, with a little more accuracy than uh, than I had in the past uh, you'll be seeing more of it I've got uh, got some other things I'd like to talk about um, some ideas of, of how to use this um, you know one of the questions I have is how do I know that it's really giving me a, a as precise of a 10 megahertz signal uh, as it's rated to give me um, so I like to have some kind of secondary standard that I can compare it to and I've got a couple ideas on, on how to do that. But uh, for driving the Siglent uh, SDG1025, and I would assume most of the others in the, uh, the family, uh, it's doing a perfect job. Um, they seem to have fixed whatever bug was in the software. And uh, like I said, it's working great for me. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed it, likes and uh, subscribes are always appreciated. And like always, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.